Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Alexo ASMR and today I will be making a how to play board games video. So um, as some of you may know, I am a huge fan of board games and so are my cousins. So we usually get together every now and then to play. We play all kinds of games, usually strategic games like Dead of Winter, Risks, Game of Thrones Risks, and Game of Thrones, <laughs> um, and Pandemic, all kinds of games. And I also watch Will Wheaton hosting Tabletop on YouTube. And I think they stopped making that already, but I still watch those videos from a couple of years ago. And I learned how to play a lot of those games from them. So I decided to purchase a few. Well, a few is an understatement. I purchased like a couple more than a few, like 10. And I thought, yeah, let's make a video teaching you guys how to play. If you're not interested, you can just listen to my voice and relax. And if you are, we can learn it together. Um, so if you guys like it, let me know. Leave a like. Let me know in the comment section. If you guys like it, I will definitely make more because I have a lot of them to get through. <laughs> so let's just get started. This is the game Love Letter by Saiji Kanai. Show you the box real quick. Now, this is the premium edition. Um, there's a regular edition, which is only for two to four players, but they came out with this one, which is kind of like an expansion that could go up to eight players, I think. And um, it comes in this very nice box. If you can hear it, just guess what it feels like. So let's open it up. Wow, right here. So first you're gonna find the manual, which will not be reading because you have me right here. You're gonna find this baggie of red hearts and one yellow heart. And then let's get to these cards because that's gonna be a lot. So in the box, there will be eight of these cards, which is basically like a manual kind of like, well, not manual. It tells you exactly how many cards are in that game. This side is for two to four players. And then on the other side, it's for five plus players, which you will be using both sides if you have that many people playing. So let's read the first side, okay? The list of cards for two to four players is one princess, one countess, one king, two prince, two handmaid, two baron, and two priest, and five guards. So before we go any further, the purpose, well, the goal of this game is for the player to win over the princess. So let's go one by one to explain what they do. So, um, you know what, let's do the other thing first. Let's do how the game is set up, how about that? So, for this game, you shuffle all the cards in this game, well, for two to four players, into a deck, and then you give one to each person, face down. So the whole time, they're not supposed to know what you have. And then you put the deck in the middle, you cut one card um, as like a burn pile so people can't count. So they don't know exactly what you are if it comes down to the last card, which is usually the case if you're really good. So um, each time you draw a card and then now you have two cards. Now that time you have to use one card and each card has an effect and you have to use that effect each time. So it really kind of like you have to think what you have to do. So I'll go one by one to explain what everything is. Now I'll show you the guard first, okay? So for two to four players, there are five guards in the game. And I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so underneath you will see the effect it has on the other players. So guard name a number other than one and choose any player if they have that number in their hand they are knocked out of the round so notice how on the top there's a number 
focused right there. Now the card has one because they're the lowest. So usually, um, and let's say another player has the priest, which is one number up. So let's say the player has a priest, as you can see is two, right? I can guess that player and say, hmm, I think you have a two. Now, if they have it, they must discard that card and they're out of the round. In order to lose that round, you have to have no cards on your hand. Now, because if it's not your turn, you only have one card. They can only guess that one card, what you have in that one card. And you have to be honest about it. If you have it, you have to say it. So, they're out of the round if you guessed correctly, but you cannot guess one. Okay, so this is number one. Number two is the priest. Choose another player and look at their hand. This is number two. And they are in these nice sleeves and come with the premium edition, which is another reason I bought it because I want to keep them pristine. Um, so this one, you can choose to look at another player's hand. So let's say I want to look at your hand. You have to show me in secret and I'll take a look and then give it back to you. Now, this can be used strategically because if, let's say, I have, if I choose draw a card next round and I know that you haven't used a card I saw, I can call you out on it and say you have a five or something and then you will lose that round. So whenever someone used a priest, you usually should get rid of the hand, um, but I'll get through more strategy after I introduce all the cards first. The next one is number three, called the Baron. This is the Baron. So, the Baron is to choose another player. You secretly compare hands with them. The player with the lower number is out of the round. So, let's say I draw, I have a seven in hand, which is a countess, but I'll show you what that is later. And let's say you have a number five prince. And because I have the countess, I will play this card, the baron. I play it and say, I want to come your hand with you. Now, if you do that, we have to secretly show each other our hand, look at it. And then the person with the lower number has to show their hand and discard it. Now, because I have a seven, you have a five, you automatically lost that trade. Um, usually this hand is very good if you have a high number because it's like most guarantee you're gonna win the comparison so the Baron's very good there's two of that in the game and it's possible sometimes that you use a Baron you compare to another Baron and you can win because you play the Baron and they have a higher card in their hand and you only have a Baron so that's number three now the next one we have it's number four which is kind of like one of my favorite ones to use it's the handmaid. Now the handmaid, you cannot be chosen as part of the effects of other players card until the start of your next turn. So if you have this card, you can use it and put it in front of you, I'm gonna use my handmaid. Now this is kind of like an immunity card because it goes around. So basically no one can touch you until your turn. So after that, your card has to be put in the burn pile but this is really good if let's say someone knows your hand knows that you have this card and you're like you know what I'm gonna play it now I'm immune or if you have the other good card and you draw the handmaid you can use that and then you can survive another round and hopefully knock everybody else out so that's the handmaid there's two of that in the deck for two to four players next one I mentioned number five so I'll show you what it is Number five, it's the prince. The prince, you choose any player. They must discard their hand and draw a new card. Um, this can come in very handy because let's say you have a very high card. Um, and I, maybe I don't know that. I don't know. Usually I wouldn't know it. So I'll be like, you have to discard this card, okay? You discard it, and you, let's say you lose the king, which is a six. You're like, damn it, because that's a really high number. Um, 
this comes in handy, and I'll tell you why it's more handy in a bit. We have to work our way down. Number six is the king. There's one of the king. Here. Sorry for the glare. <laughs> um, the king. Choose another player. You trade hands with them. Now, the king, it's problematic sometimes because you kind of have to trade sometimes and you don't know exactly what the other player has. And that can be dangerous because it, let's say you trade it with somebody and they draw a guard next round. They can knock you out because they know exactly what you have in hand. Unless you trade a guard, then they can't guess number one. So this is a risky move, but I'll tell you why this is good later. A lot of these lead up to like the last card, which is the princess. Let me find where she went. Hmm. I don't see her. <laughs> Did I lose the princess? I'm pretty sure I had her just a second ago. Ah, oh, there she is. Okay, so the number seven is the countess. Um, very beautiful. <laughs> She saved me a dozen of times um, because she's number seven. She's the second highest. And there's only one of her. Now the countess, I'll, sh I'll tell you what she does. If you have this card and the king or prince in your hand, you must discard this card. So let's say I have the prince in my hand. Let's say I have the countess and the prince, right? I have a prince, I draw the countess. Now I look at it, I'm like, okay. Because this is based on honesty, you have to get rid of the countess. You cannot play the prince because if you have a king or prince in the hand and this, you must get rid of the countess first. So you have to throw it out. Now, here's another thing. Usually, if you're not forced to do it, you can lie. So let's say I have, I drew a priest or something. And I want to trick people into thinking I have a king or prince. I would discard my countess. Risky, but it's a strategy and then now people think I have a king or a prince so they will waste the guard on me thinking that I have a five or six which is not true so that's a strategy now this is the best one and the cursed if you draw it now you might think princess number eight why is the princess in the game I don't know because you, the game is trying to win the heart of the princess but you can be the princess too I guess you're winning young heart. Um, but I'll read what she does. If you discard this card, you are immediately knocked out of the round. Wow. She has, she does absolutely nothing else but beat people on the highest number. Because if the deck is used up, um, you compare hands of everybody else and the highest number wins. So 8 would win the game automatically if you have it. But there are so many other cards out there that can counter a princess. For example, the guard. If the guard finds out, well, not they'll find out if the guard guessed correctly that you are a princess, you're out of the round. If if the prince make you, because let me tell you what prince does. The prince make you choose a player and they must discard the hand and draw a new one. If the prince uses this on you, you're out of the game because you're discarding this card. And um, let's say the king. And let's say it comes down to like the last hand, the last card he drew was a king, and he's like, I'm going to use this card, and you're going to trade hands with me. And then you trade the 8 to him. You don't lose based on that, but you lose when you compare the number. And because 8 is the highest, you automatically win the game if you draw an 8. Focused. She's also very beautiful, pretty lady. So that's 2 to 4 players. And uh, there's a total of... Sixteen cards, so it goes pretty quick if you have four people. I think like two, three rounds, and you're basically out of the game. So I guess that's the strategy. Um, usually when we play this, we're very good at, at guessing. You usually guess like number five or four or three because there's two of those, and um, we usually write. Um, but this game is a lot on chances and uh, luck but also on strategy, which is something my friend doesn't see and they don't understand the strategy behind it. And I'm like, really? There's a lot of strategy that goes into this game. Um, but going back to the manual, 
in order to win the game, you have to win hearts, which is in this baggie right here. So for two players, you have to win seven tokens because they go really fast the game. For three, you need to five. You need to win five tokens. For four players, you need to win four tokens. And that's two to four players. And that took me like fifteen minutes to explain. But because this is an ASMR video, we can go further and explain five to eight players, which we have not a lot of experience on. So let's learn it together. This is the five to eight player side, and when you play. With this side, you include all of the cards, so it's like 38 cards. And yeah, they give you extra sleeves too. Let's go unordered, okay? So in this one, there is a bishop, there's one dowager queen, one constable, two count, two psychophant, two baronist, two cardinal, Three guards, three more guards, um, one jester, and one assassin. Sorry, I had to do a cutaway, and there was a loud truck outside, and I didn't want that in the video. But let's learn these new cards, okay? Now, let's start with the assassin. Funny enough, he has a zero, has absolutely no influence in the court. The number is like influence, basically. And what he does is, if you have this card in your hand, when another player chooses you as a part of a guard's effect, they're knocked out of the round and you're not. Discard this card and draw a new card. Now, because if you play with up to 8 players, there are 8 guards in total, um, which is dangerous if you use this card. So if I guess that you have a card, I would just be like, haha, I have an assassin, you're dead. <laughs> so this is a very good card. but. If you hold on to this until the end, you're not going to win because it has zero influence. Now we have the Jester. I'd like to show you. The art is really nice. Now the Jester also has zero influence because the princess does not like him. But it says, choose another player. Give them a Jester token. If they win this round, you gain an affection token. So the affection token is the heart I show you, which is how you're going to win. So, um, this is fun because if you think this player is going to win, you're going to be like, I'm betting my money on you. Because if that person wins, you also win. So that's fun too. <laughs> now the next one is the Cardinal. The Cardinal also has two influence, just like the Priest. Do, 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 try not to click the glare. The Cardinal. Choose two players. They must trade hands. Look at one of their hands. Um, kind of like a priest, but with more power, making you switch cards with one another. So kind of like a king and priest blend. So they're kind of fun. Which is fun because you can scroll with other players like this. So now they know each other's hand. So the next one is the Baroness, which is like the female version of a Baron. Do, do, please no glare. So the Baroness. Choose one or two other players. Look at their hands. Um, I don't understand why you have to choose one or two players. Because why would I want to choose one player if I can choose two? But yeah, you can look at their hand and you know exactly what they have. So strategy would be to get rid of that card. Unless you have a princess then you're kind of screwed because you can't get rid of it, so you must get rid of that person. And you cannot tell any other players what you saw because it's all about secrecy. Next one is the Psychophant. Don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly, but here we go. Purple, nice and purple. So the Psychophant. Choose any player. If the next card play has an effect that requires one or more players to be chosen, they must be one of them. So... Um, basically, if I play this card, and then the next card, someone else play, play, have an effect, then it has to be that person. So it has to be more than one person, obviously. So let's say I use this card, and I use it on you. And then the next player decide to use a Baron or something. Well, 
they can't choose any other player. They have to choose you. <laughs> you have to be the other person. So, eh, we're still learning how to play this. I haven't really learned how to play the Psychophant. They're kind of confusing. Now, the next one we have is the Count. The Count. The Count. If this card is in your discard pile at the end of the round, add one to the number of the card in your hand. Resolve ties normally. So this is also another one we barely used, but apparently when you use a card, you're supposed to use leaving a discard pile in your own pile. And um, usually you're supposed to do it in two to four players as well, but it never really gets down to it because um, when we do the numbers is usually when two players tied. So if me and you tied on the same number, like I have a five, you also have a five, then you have to count the number you have, like the total number you have of, in, uh, of the influence to determine the winner. So this one is kind of good if it comes down to it, usually not, not going to happen. Um, but I could be wrong if I'm reading this wrong. It should be right. Um, if, if I'm wrong, correct me, okay? Constable. Probably the best card, because you don't even have to win to win the token. This is the constable. If this card is in your discard pile when you are knocked out of the round, gain an affection token. So if I have this card, I would use it immediately because if I get knocked out, I also win just by existing. <laughs> this is a very good card. But I mean, if you use it and someone else also get it, that's kind of hard because you want to be the first one to get to a certain number of affection. So yeah, it's, it's good, but to a certain extent. The next one we have is the Dowager Queen. Evil looking lady. <laughs> She's also very good. Choose another player. You secretly compare hands with them. The player with the higher number is out of the round. So she is basically the opposite of our lovely Baron. They're like the opposite of each other. This is the higher loses, this is the higher wins. Very good if you have a princess because you're basically done for the game. Um, and then the last one we have, again, I lose cards like that, is the bishop. Let me look through this pile, found it. Um, here's the bishop, even stronger than the princess. Nine. Let me read you. It's a long one. Name a number other than one and choose another player. If they have that number in their hand, gain an affection token. They may discard their hand and draw a new card. The princess beats the bishop at the end of the round. So, nine means nothing if someone else has a princess because the princess still wins. But you can gain an extra token in the game if you guessed correctly, which can potentially give you two hearts in one game or even three. If you, well, only two, I think, because the constable also exists. So um, that's basically the game. It has so much in, in it, and it takes like a few seconds to learn because each player would get one of these cards that explain to you what they do. And they have a number of, um, total number of the cards, like it shows you one to one, two, something like that. And this game is really fun. Um, one of my cousins doesn't like it because she thinks it's too much by chance and not strategy. But I think she just needs to play a little more to understand that it is a lot of strategy involved. But yeah, now that I made a mess, I really hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, it's really fun to make um, because I like explaining things. And honestly, I would play these games with you guys if I can. But unfortunately, that's impossible because I can't play this game through the camera. But um, leave a like if you enjoyed it, comment and let me know your thoughts, and make sure you subscribe if you like it. Just let me know if you want to see more of these videos. But anyway, that's the game, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.